first question, Ander Beth. Why do you think it's easier for some people to build muscle than others? Does it always come down to genetics? Oh, great question, uh, Christina. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, before we talk about genetics, we need to talk about the obvious stuff that I think sometimes people push to the side and they they like to say it's all about genetics. But let's let's talk let's about talk the about other, excuses. Yeah, let's talk about the, the the other factors first. Okay, is the person working out and training? In, in the most appropriate and effective way possible for their body. That's two things there. First, is it an effective workout? And two, is it the most effective workout for their body? Um, is that person eating a diet that is the most effective for building muscle and appropriate for the body? That's also very, very important. Is the person have a lifestyle that is conducive to building muscle, especially for their body? You got to look at all those three, three, those things first before you go on to genetics. As I, you know, I would have, you know, I knew this growing up working out. There'd be people around me who'd be building muscle and bet faster than me, and I think to myself, "Oh, it must be genetics, or it must yeah. be steroids, one or the other." Yeah. Now that I'm older, looking back, I can see like, "Oh, that person ate much better than I did," or I didn't prioritize sleep, yes. and they did, or I overtrained like crazy. And they just focused on the big compound lift. It kind of reminds stronger. me of like the argument that we're making about the fighting thing, the size and the skill thing, right? Like with a, fi the, a fighter, if you have incredible skills, if you really know the tools that it takes to build muscle, you can compete even with somebody who has great genetics. Mm -hmm. I really feel that way. I think the genetics thing is just a quick excuse that we that we make because somebody else is responding and we're doing the same thing. So there's that there's those outliers, which everybody has that friend or girlfriend that they know that gets away with eating crappy food, barely touches any weight, and their body looks great. That's such a small percentage of the people. Great point, because when you look at genetics as a whole with humans, most pe the vast majority of us f are somewhere in the middle. M very few of us are on the edges, on the edges. So it's like a, it's what, like a bell curve, right? Um, on the edges, very, very few people. As you get close to the middle, there's a larger, larger, larger amount of people that fit somewhere in the middle. So the, the here's the reality. The truth is, if you look around, m most people around you have genetics that are kind of like yours. Most people are somewhere in the middle. It's rare to have these crazy superior muscle building genetics. And trust me, when you meet someone that has these type of genetics, you know. It's not a question. It's not like, hey, yeah. he gained five more pounds than me. It's more like, wow, he's 270 pounds of muscle. You yeah. know, and the guy works Not out twice. Not to a mention, week. what's the the history there? Like, how long have they been in the game? Like, I know a lot of times, like people have started, you know, when they're like twelve or thirteen, and like they've built, you know, the, their body responds because they've built all this in like over decades, and you know, like for them to to see them, they they see them just responding, you know, way later in the game, and they don't realize, like, yeah, th this has been a whole history in the making. It's not just like right now. Well, the, the truth is, you know. Building muscle is hard. It takes uh, consistency. Um, it takes proper nutrition. It takes proper exercise. And the fact is, a majority of people don't have all three of those lined up. Um, most people half-ass their diet. They're not getting all the nutrients they need. And they're asking their body to respond. Most people don't do a very good job with their programming. They they mm -hmm. gravitate towards a type of modality they enjoy. And it, and as we talk on the show all the time, that's important for consistency. But when trying to build muscle, if you're still doing the Jane Fonda tape at home, you know, and you're wondering why your body's not building more muscle, uh, you're pretty adapted to that. Or you're going to your favorite, you know, Orange Theory F45 class, and you've seen good results in the first three, six months, but you're not building any more muscle. Well, it, you're, you're, you're adapted to that way of training. So I think it's more of uh, not all of those things aligning and most people are missing somewhere there th than it is genetics. I think that's the most common. I don't, I don't really think people know how to navigate into other modalities properly. I just don't think that they know other options, you know, well enough like they do. Like they know they need to up their calories, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the first thing. Like most people are pretty, you know, familiar with that part of it. But, you know, people don't adjust their training uh, to, to match, you know, how their body needs to respond. So I think that's something that, you know, we need to better educate uh, the general public about. It's that. a it's a really easy, uh, you know, it's a really easy path, right, to say, oh, it's genetics. We've heard that with fat loss, too. You know, oh, I'm, I'm I can't lose weight or I'm overweight. And it's because of my genetics. Uh, you know, I know uh, my friends don't worry about, you know, and here's a funny thing, training clients, you start to have people track and pay attention to certain things and you start to realize 
sure, genetics plays a role, but it ain't the role that you used to think. Like, I remember there was a show on, um, I want to say it was Discovery Channel, where they had people who were like morbidly obese, 400, 500 pounds, right? Mm. And they would be part of this reality show and they would get followed around. My 600 pound life. It, 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 it was one of those. <laughs> so that, was a, that was a show. I think that yeah. was, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was something like that, right? And they'd get followed around with the camera. And so before the show starts, you see this interview of the person. And the person's like, yeah, I've been overweight my whole life. I grew up this way. My body stores body fat really easily. It's really crazy. And you kind of hear them making the case for, hey, look, I, I was born this way. and I can't help it. Meanwhile, the camera starts following them around. And then you start to see what, how they actually eat. And you get to see that for breakfast, it's five breakfast sandwiches and a soda. Yeah. Then they have a bag of, uh, full-size bag of chips as a snack. And then lunchtime, they go through the drive through again. And then dinner, it's like a full size of pizza or they go to the grocery store and they're like, you know, um, this is healthy, right? It's chicken. Meanwhile, it's fried chicken and it's a whole bucket or whatever. Yeah. And you watch and you go, Oh, this person just has no idea. Mm -hmm. They actually have no idea what a, what a, what a proper portion looks like. And they're blaming it on genetics. Just like when I was a kid trying to build muscle, I didn't know what the, I didn't, I, I thought I was eating enough or more than enough to build muscle. But when I go back and really, if I really look at the calories and grams of protein, all that stuff, it wasn't enough. I remember learning this when my parents went to Italy one uh, one year for, uh, I think it was like a month and a half or two months. I was staying at my grandma's house and obviously I have an Italian grandma, so she'll make me whatever I want. And so she's like, what do you want to eat? And I said, I love steak. Make me a lot of steak. So when I lived at my grandma's house, she made me steak two or three times a day. So two or three times a day, I'd have steak and I'd have pasta or whatever. And I remember over that course of that month and a half, I was gaining muscle like I'd never gained before. And then I pieced it together and it's like, oh, it's because... My, grand, my grandma's feeding me steak all the time. So hmm. genetics definitely play a role, but it's not the role that you think for the most part. Now, that being said, when you get to the the sides, when you get to the outliers, well, yeah, then genetics get pretty crazy. Um, now, I've worked in fitness for 20 years, so there's already a bit of a, of, a, of a selection bias. So the type of people that are attracted to fitness, the type of people that work into fitness, you're probably, you're probably already dealing with a, a level of genetics that's a little bit better than average, right? The, the, most of these people are they're drawn to it because they're good at it. So I'm already, there's already a bit of a selection bias. But I can count on one hand how many people I met in 20 years working in fitness, looking back, that I could say had ins gifted. insane genetics. Yeah, I agree. You know what yeah. I'm saying? This all this also goes back to the argument that we had the other day about, or you know, debate that we were talking about, which is harder to build muscle or burn body fat. I, I think to build muscle, you, it, this also brings up another point of how there's less room for air. If you are trying to burn body fat, just moving, doesn't matter what modality, how consistent you've been doing, just moving a lot and eating less and you'll lose body weight. That's, mm. and you can keep, and you can get away with continuing to push that, right? More extreme, more extreme, more extreme, more extreme. You don't, and still, you don't need as much programming specific. Right. And, so, I mean, and, and you'll still see results. I mean, you could just run in place, you know, and and eat less every single day and increase that intensity yeah, week, over week, yeah. week over week. And then you'll see the decrease in, in body fat and body weight. But with building muscle, it's it's you can't just, oh, if you overdo it like crazy and you're not feeding correctly, you're going to see no mm -hmm. results. So you could be putting in a ton of work inside the gym, not fueling the body nutritionally to support all that extra work, and your body won't build shit. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of times you may even lose weight in pursuit of building muscle. So I think there's a, a, a sweeter spot when trying to build, which makes it feel like it's more challenging and then again defaulting to oh i'm just fucked i have bad genetics and my friend has got great genetics now it's less often that and it's more addressing some of these this yeah you know, they're not really isolating that that's very specific goal of building muscle they're not willing to then like you know like take down a lot of the extracurricular like cardiovascular type activity that they have incorporated in their plan because it makes them feel good. Well, whatever. I remember, and there's been several times in my lifting career where I had these moments where I thought I was doing everything right. And then I made this one little change and all of a sudden I add 10 pounds of muscle mm -hmm. after like beating my head against the wall for two years straight, right? Yeah. Two years straight thinking I know everything about lifting and I'm doing everything right mm -hmm. nutritionally. And then one day it dawns on me and I don't remember what I either read something or somebody told like, me got more sleep or something. Well, I was, you know, back off the basketball. I was playing basketball every single day in addition to lifting every single day. And I just couldn't keep up with the calories. And I thought because I was stuffing my face, I was eating enough, you know? And so just me like cutting out basketball and also my body goes boom, 10 pounds, like came on me overnight. And it was like, 
oh shit, like that that was a big difference mm-hmm. for someone like me who again was probably blaming it on genetics for the the first half of my lifting. 